Hi, I'm Reverend Natalie Jean, and this is Reverend Natalie Jean with the Word. Today, I'm going to talk about the transitioning body, the transitioning spirit. I'm going to talk about when people leave this earthly plane to go on to heaven, to go on to closer to be closer to God, to sit on the right hand. But before I begin, I wanted to say a prayer. Let us close our eyes. I can't close my eyes because I'm going to read the prayer. Let the forces of light bring illumination to mankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May men of good will everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all men be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. That the words of liberation liberation issue forth. Let them bring succor to the sons of men. Let the writer from the secret place come forth in coming to save. Come forth, O mighty one. Let the souls of men awaken to the light, and may they stand with masked intent. Let the fiat of the Lord go forth. The end of woe has come. Come forth, O mighty one. The hour of service of the saving force has now arrived. Let it be spread abroad, O mighty one. Let light and love and power and death fulfill the purpose of the coming one. The will to save is here. The, lo the love to carry forth the work is widely spread abroad. The act of aid of all who know the truth is also here. Come forth, O mighty one, and blend these three. Construct a great defending wall. The rule of evil now must end. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light street forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Amen. So today I want to talk about this transitioning spirit. And the reason I wanted to talk about this today was because of everything that's going on, um, especially with Oklahoma. Um, the devastation is unbelievable. And for this to happen over there again and again and again, and it seems that there are no bunkers, there is no this, that, it, it's incredible to me. There's so many lives lost, and we need to get to a place where we can move through these things with ease and grace. But the other reason I wanted to talk about this is because this past week I had a friend that, a very close friend, in fact, it's a very close friend of mine and my, my friend Erlene, my business partner Erlene, um, she passed away suddenly. And it has devastated the both of us to a point of no return. It is amazing how when people lose their lives, you tend to forget all your principles. Even as a reverend, even as a minister, you tend to lose, you're like, oh, I don't know those principles. Everything that we've learned, you know, we push them aside and we let the human reign. And sometimes we allow the human to just let us do its thing. And, you know, we go back to our principles. Uh, the thing that happened with my friend was that, you know, she was in remission from cancer for, for a while now, for about a year and a half, and she had to have a mastectomy. She got rid of one boob, and then uh, a year later it happened again, and she had to get rid of the other one. But this time she didn't want to do um, radiation or chemotherapy therapy because it drained her. Um, she wanted to go the natural right. She wanted to go the spiritual right, and, you know, my friend was a force to be reckoned with. She was strong. She was proud. She had goals. She was going to do all these things. Um, on my show, Infinite Elevation Hour, you know, we planned to have her as a guest because I knew the dynamic that she was. I knew all the things that she was doing, how it was going to help the universe. You know, she wanted to get into um, the Democratic Party, and she was working for the Democratic Party, um, doing wonderful things there. She wanted to uh, start up her catering business again. She was going to get, you know, uh, she was going to take the bar. I mean, I mean, she had some wonderful plans, and I used to talk to her all the time. We were very close. And thank God for Facebook. I just have to say this, because a friend of ours, 
uh, posted on Facebook that she went into the hospital and she was unresponsive. And this is how I learned of um, her being ill. And so immediately, I, as soon as I found out, I went to the hospital. We got there. Her family was telling us she had, the doctor came in and said she had hours or, to live or she um, wasn't going to make it through the night. It was devastating because I went with my mother. My mother knows her also. And um, we were just shocked. We were stunned. We didn't even think that that's what we were going to hear. Uh, it was just, it, it literally has shaken my universe because she used to call me to ask me to help her with a bunch of stuff and I recently did a workshop for her and so the next day I went to see her again and luckily I was by myself this time I sat with her I talked to her chewed her out a little bit but um told her that I loved her and I just told her to still fight but when I touched her she was cold and you know I, and I learned she was on life support you know and and speaking to her mother, her mother's 92, she said they were going to make a, a decision about, you know, whether they were going to pull the plug. But my mother said, you know what, I hope that she goes on her own. That night I posted on Facebook, I said, it's time for us to let her go. Because, you know, she's fighting the good fight, but, you know, she's on life support and it seems that there's no, no return. And I am a big fa I favor. I'm in favor of miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe in blessings. You know, Jesus raised the dead. He healed the sick. I believe that this is in all of us. But at that point, when I saw her, I knew that, that this was the end. And so the following morning, her, her sister called me and she said, yeah, Carla died at 6.30 in the morning. And I was like, wow, that's even after I told people to let her go. I think people were holding on to her because they loved her. And so the reason I bring this all about is because, you know, what happens to us when somebody transitions? You know, when I see things like the Oklahoma thing, that rec the tornadoes, hurricanes, and stuff like that, or somebody else dies on, on the Internet and you read about it, I always tell people, well, you know what? That person led a good life. They led a good life. You know, it's their time to go. We don't know when we're supposed to go. We don't know, you know, what that plan is. But that we should just remember the times that we spent with the individual, uh, the good times that we had. We shouldn't think of them in a bad light or the fact that they're gone. And so when my friend passed on or this tragedy happened, all that went out the window. I am a minister. I'm into spirituality. I know the principles like the back of my hand. They all went out the window. I was angry. I was cursing. I was mad. I was crying. I've been crying ever since. And I said to myself, I need to go through this process. I'm not going to, oh, okay, get Natalie. Well, you know, she's in a better place. I understand that. She's free of pain. I understand that. And I'm happy for her. I'm so thrilled for her that she's not going through this thing anymore and it's interesting because ever since she's passed on I've dreamt about her every single night um, and uh, I think the main reason is is because there's a lot of unanswered things for me and I keep battling them out in my head but still trying to remember the principles you know we don't know when we're going to leave this earth but that she lived her life to the fullest she tried to live her life to the fullest and she was a good person she was a loving person she was always there for other people. Um, and whenever she needed something, I tried to do my best to give it to her um, in helping her and aiding her in anything that she needed. Um, but I'm still battling it out. And I can be honest and not perpetrate like, oh, I'm a minister and I'm going to be stoic. That's not going to happen here. It's not going to happen. Um, I'm going to go through this and I'll get through it um, by remembering her by thanking God that she is free and that she's with him um, and that she's walking around, dancing, jumping around. She no longer has pneumonia. She no longer has that thing called cancer. She is free, free from anything that is not God. And so when I look at the situations like in Oklahoma and I see a dog that's just, they took a picture of this dog sitting on top of some wood. They couldn't understand why this dog was just still standing there. What was the dog doing? The dog was standing there because he was standing guarding his owner that had died in the, in the storm. 
And so when I look at that and I think, my God, the people that can't stand animals, I don't know how they can do that, but the dog knew the owner was gone, but wasn't going to leave the owner's side for anything, for anything, because of that love connection between the dog and his owner. It's like my love connection with my friend. It is hard to let go of the person that was here, because all I keep thinking about is her laughter, her joy, and, and then I did the worst thing possible. I called her voicemail so I could hear her voice, and that just pulled me over the edge, and then I had to go back to my principles again. You know, when I think about the teachers that have sacrificed their lives, throwing their bodies on top of kids, you know, we really need to pay teachers more. People, teachers don't teach for the money. That is definite. They teach because the love of education. They teach because they li like to see a child grow and educate themselves and learn. It is a beautiful thing to see when there is a smile, there's joy on a child's face or a teenager's face or an adult's face when they are learning something. It takes courage for somebody to be able to do something like that, to take the time, because sometimes those kids can be downright nasty to the teachers. Later on in life, they do understand that those teachers are there. They, they don't make half a penny, but they're there because it's the love of the craft that allows them to be there. And then these people in Oklahoma, they went beyond the call of duty to save these children's lives. It is an amazing thing to read the stories of the survival. Now, going back to the transitioning, when we look at situations like this, we don't, want, we don't understand it. How could something like this? And the first thing that people want to do is that they want to blame God for this. The truth is, God doesn't have anything to do with the death of any of these young people or these older people that have died under these circumstances. God doesn't have anything to do with the death of my friend or the transitioning of my friend. But what has happened is our faith is more into these communicable diseases. Our faith has been more drawn to the idea that these tornadoes and hurricanes can destroy us, can take away lives, can destroy so much. Because you have to look at the news and how they describe a tornado or they describe a hurricane. They will describe how strong and powerful those things are. So in describing it and, and speaking their truth about those things, what do you think they do? They empower the tornadoes or the hurricanes to wreak havoc upon the earth. Now, what does the hurricane or the tornado, wh where do they get their power from? They get their power for, source from the universe, from nature. We are inadvertently connected to the universe. We are connected to nature. So the culminations of tornadoes and hurricanes are our consciousness. And this particular tornado was extremely, extremely, what? Powerful. Because this is what we have called all of them. But let's, let's just say that we sat and we, oh, we said, okay, hurricanes are coming, tornadoes are coming. But it has no life. It has no power here. Because why? God can be the only power. Now we've enforced our power only to God. How much destruction can that thing do against God? It can't do anything against God. And so we need to get back to our principles about God and who God is and what God can do. And then we have to change our verbiage, our consciousness, to what hurricanes and tornadoes can do in this lifetime. Because frankly, for me, they have no power here. Even when we have the little things that happen here in Maryland or in Washington, D.C., I have sat outside and said, you shall not pass in front of this house. This tree shall not fall on this house because this house is here. This tree is here to protect us. This tr tree is here to shade us. This tree is here in love. And I refuse to cut it down, and it shall never be cut down. I, I am such a hater of, or I dislike very much, when people chop their trees down because of these tornadoes, these weather storms and stuff like that. But the thing that we need to do, instead of cutting down the trees, we have to look into ourselves. We have to look within to see, okay, where is our mindset? How do we feel about this world? Do we hate more than we love? Do we love more than we hate? 
What are we doing? How are we bettering this, this world? You know, we're so focused on ourselves and what we need to do in our lives. Now, in order to make a difference in this world, we need to focus on ourselves. We need to make sure that within ourselves we are loving individuals, we are positive. And then, once we have worked that out, we're going to help out the universe. Because we can't help out the universe if we have some negativity formulating itself within our bodies. We need to be extremely positive, and we, then we need to disperse this positivity out into the universe. How do we do that? With our words, with our mindset. We're not going to say a bad thing about a man that's asking for money on the street. A lot of people don't like to give homeless people money on the street. They just don't like to do it. They think, oh, why doesn't that person get a job? Now, you've got to think about this. If the person doesn't have anywhere to shower, I'm sure that he's not going to get a job if he's stinky. Are you going to offer him a place to shower and put on a suit? You've got to question that. I think a lot of people need to see this. I saw this video on YouTube, and it's basically about this man who's homeless who talks about how somebody called him a bum. Now, he said, I'm not a bum. I am a human being. He says, do you think I want to be doing this? I've lost everything. I need to survive, but I'm not a bum. And he told that to an individual that walked by and called him a bum. That individual had to walk back and think about it. He had to apologize to the man. He said, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have called you that name. You are a human being. And he ended up giving the man $20 because he knew at that moment, what he did was wrong. He was sending out some kind of negativity to that man. And what has that man done? There is something that happened in his life for him to lose everything, for him to, lose, to sleep in the street. And there's some people that are willingly, that willingly sleep in the street. You know, they give up. They, want, they don't want to work. They don't want to do anything. There are some of those people out there. But we should never chastise, we should never belittle anybody that is asking for money. You never know if that's God asking for money. You don't know if that's Jesus asking for money. You don't know if that's somebody that's passed on, that's your relative, asking for money, asking for a little help, asking for a little comfort. What is missing in this universe is love. We have so many things going on in this universe where so many people are hating hating and killing people for no reason. I read, in the, I read on the internet today about this man that, you know, would, ran into a British shoulder. I think he took a, 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 a machete or something like that, or a, a, one of those knives like they hack things with, and went to hack the man to pieces. And he was going, they were going to behead the guy. And this woman was getting off a bus, decided to talk them out of it. You know, not caring about her own sense, not caring about her own life, she decided to step up, and she talked them out of it. They apprehended the men that did this. But the man said the reason he did this is almost like an eye for an eye. But what he doesn't understand, he says an eye for an eye, somebody's going to retaliate against him. And then what happens is it's a cycle. And so what you see is more transitioning spirits because people can't let go of the fact that you need to let God work. You need to let yourself make a difference, but in a positive way. You don't torture people. You don't kill people to make a difference and say, see, you do that to our people. We're going to do it against you. It's almost like with these, these, these Boston bombers. They got tired of watching their own, and they decided, oh, we're going to retaliate. But what they don't understand is that what comes around goes around. The one brother is dead. The other one's in the hospital unable to speak. They're finding out more things that this child could have been involved in. And he's reaping the benefits of what we call karma. You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. In this lifetime, we have to understand there are consequences to every action. So, if you're going to be nice and loving, what do you think you're going to get in return? You're going to get something loving and positive back in return. Now, if you do something negative and nasty, that's what you're going to get in return. So, I implore everybody out there to be loving and nice and joyful and peaceful because that is what's going to help us do away with all the negativity that is occurring in the world. 
Every day you turn on the TV, somebody's shooting up a parade, tornadoes are happening, somebody's bo bombing a, a marathon for nothing because they're tired. And some of these people, when they grow weak and they grow weary and they grow tired, they re grow restless, they say, well, I'm going to make a difference. I don't care if I die in the process. I don't care if I get run over, but I'm going to do this thing. Rather than sitting down rationally and say, how can I make a positive difference in the world? We need to come to a point where we don't care what somebody else's religious beliefs are. You know, as long as somebody's loving and positive and beautiful and this and handsome and, and just a, a great person, we shouldn't care what their philosophies, there's so many religions out there, how can you possibly hate them all? How can you possibly think that yours is the one? I can sit here and basically tell you that mine, mine may not be the one, but it's the one that worked for me. I don't enforce, I don't force people to believe in anything that I say. But I know that God put me on this earth to bring out a message. And I'm going to bring it out to the best of my ability. And I'm going to hope that there are people that are listening out there and understanding. One thing that I do implore people to do is that if you love somebody, tell them that you love them. Tell them that they mean everything to you. Because you don't know if that's the last time you're going to see them. With my friend that's transitioned, that passed on, that's one thing that I was able to tell her in the hospital, but I wish I was able to tell her to her face and that she could, she could say something back to me, that like we would have a wonderful conversation about it. But alas, that did not happen. And so now, you know, so last night I was like telling my mother that I loved her. I said, you never know what's going to happen. So I want you to hear it. So you can never say, Natalie didn't say it to me. Oh, I wish I could have said this, that, and the other. Hug somebody. You want to go hug somebody? Ask that guy out. Ask that guy, girl out that you wanted to ask out and been afraid. Go, go for the goal that you wanted to do. Fulfill your destiny. Do it. Who's stopping you? You're the only person stopping yourself. You're stopping yourself. But let me tell you, I, don't, I hate to use the expression that life is short because it really isn't. But if you have some goal, something, one thing I've learned from my friend's passing is that if there's something that you want to do, <clears throat> go and do it. Do it now. Do it with joy. Do it with positivity. And know that you are fulfilling your destiny and you're working with God. So this was Reverend Ali Jean in the Word. Stay blessed and I'll see you next time.